This is again based on one file which I created some time ago and it's this coffee grinder and I will try also improve a little bit some things for example I think those are a little bit too small those uh, beans and and then maybe we design some different pattern here and things like that and you can also of course watch the video the speed modeling video of this specific model but no I'm doing a tutorial about this and I will move this here so I can use it as a reference <coughs> so first thing I do differently here is that I scale this I, I make all of those walls of this uh, uh, box separately so here's the first wall and then I duplicate this and move here and then duplicate again and rotate in z axis 90 degrees so now we have here this and move here kind of okay I think and now let's create the hole for the self in this um, box so I, I add here loop cut then and then bevel it a little bit like this and then move down like that and now I can just delete that area delete faces and then let's create a face in those uh, places and by the way I'm using F2 add-on I need to tell this every time so mess F2 and with this if we uh, know uh, create face we need to only select one edge and then press F and then we have face huh? so that's the secret of that let's select those and then press shift plus S to snap the cursor to uh, uh, select it like that and then let's add here another cube and let's scale it in Z axis like that and then press S and shift plus Z so we created this hat for this okay and then let's go face selection mode and then extrude and scale this part and then move it up a little bit and then i'm going to extrude it again like that and then i need to add here a cylinder so uh, let's press shift plus s again and cursor to select it and let's add cylinder and we need to scale that cylinder also a little bit because it's too big and let's scale it in z axis also and then uh, i select this top face here and then i press e to extrude and s to scale and then i'm going to create this kind of shape and maybe something like this maybe here also like that be honest I have no idea what, what I'm doing why should we have this kind of shape I don't know I'm just doing because that's what I see and bevel this one like this and then let's select those uh, by the way this didn't show the shortcut so the shortcut is alt plus shift plus right mouse button to select loops and then let's press I to insert and then F6 and now let's add more depth to those and now we can activate smooth setting and then we need to fix the smooth setting because it looks ugly so here auto smooth and it looks better by the way also when I have here ambient occlusion so we can see those details a little bit better with that which I think is very crucial you need to see what you are doing um, I also want to add here some bevel uh, let's select all of these here and then um, ctrl plus B to bevel those just a little bit beveling and also I add here how uh, here I'm gonna, gonna add one loop and then I'm going to select this one with the alt plus shift plus uh, right mouse button and then E to extrude and so press E and then like this something like this uh, to be honest I think it should be a little bit higher so uh, let's select 
everything. Uh, no, let's not select everything. Let's deselect everything and let's go vertex selection mode and let's select these and move down something like that and then let's move this down okay that's good and i also want to add some details here in these uh, edges so i just select those and then press ctrl plus b and then i bevel them just a little bit like that and then i add segments there but i am going to press f6 and i'm going to make this negative profile so no it's kind of beveling inside of this and let's also change these settings a little bit maybe it's not that big only that kind of and i think that kind of adds something to this uh, object and i also bevel these again that these most sharp things here so let's be add bevel there but not so many segments and then f6 and here let's put here back the point five okay okay let's keep working with this and this time i want to model here the self uh, thing so uh, i'm going to paste it to cube of course and um, let's move it in the position and let's also scale it in y-axis so it kind of fits there and yeah scale in y-axis it's not rocket science at least it's not it's not for me rocket science i think it should be a little bit uh, not so uh, high so i make it like this and also because this is now a little bit too high i need to move this uh, down to here and here uh, i think i should actually do this also um, from the different parts just like we did that object so that's why i i just um, scale that like that and then duplicate it rotate by axis 90 degrees so i have this bottom part and let's move it here and then i move it here so i kind of find the correct size for this so here and this should be very good something like this i think is very okay oh wrong here okay this is okay so let's move it back here and uh, i will also duplicate this one again and rotate in z axis 90 degrees and i also scale it a little bit in y axis let's select those and move them in the cor correct spot okay that's good enough i think so i move it there and maybe something like this is very good and nope, I can add some details to this if I want to. And I of course want to, so let's select this one and then let's press, let's press, let's press, sorry, I, and then let's uh, make it something like this and F6 and let's make the depth to zero. And let's press I again. So we create this kind of, what do you call those, detail there. And let's extrude that detail inside. Okay, and uh, I also wanna create something similar there. So let's I press I here also. Here I, and then let's press I again, and then uh, I, and then try to uh, set something similar we have there and then let's extrude that again so now we have if you want to you can add some very nice decoration thing there like flower or like yeah something like this i don't know yeah i don't know what is that <laughs> looks very stupid okay uh, but you can add there something very cool looking things 
maybe I'm going to do that also, but not yet. Okay, so Shift plus S and cursor to select it. And let's add here cylinder and let's scale it like this. And then cursor to select it. And let's add here icosphere. And I'm going to here rotate this 90 degrees in y axis. Okay, then I can just scale it to something like this, and then I scale in x axis like that. So I have this kind of good looking handle there. Don't make it too small. And then here we also need the auto smooth. Okay, and if this was a real object, it would like drop out like this. Because, you know gravity and things like that. So mm, I select these both and then I press I and something like this and then scale in Z axis and then I here again and let's add some depth to this new part. And now we can model here to this object we can add here. Uh, let's first I select the, this part here and cursor to select it and then let's select this one and let's add here cube and let's get it in z axis and y axis and let's move it I like to move it like that song is always in my head uh, there and then just there and then we need to duplicate it so let's duplicate it here we need to fix a little bit of those objects so I'm going to duplicate this one here and then let's press P and separate it and now I'm going to extrude it back like that and then I'm going to move it here and let's just try with what happens if we use boolean to kind of finish this. So uh, let's first um, duplicate it. Actually, no, we need to do it here also in a similar way. So I select these and duplicate and P separate and then let's create the face here. Select everything, Ctrl plus N, and then let's make this a little bit like this, and then let's move this here. So now let's join these two together. So we have now this kind of object that is uh, in the same size with this hole. And now uh, doing this not the easiest way maybe but yeah so let's select first this and then this and you should have the bool tool add-on activated and if you don't have this menu here bool tool then let's go here user preferences and here bool tool and if you don't have it either here then you should google it and then download and then install from file but yeah, I'm going to use that. So let's first select this one and then this one. And then here, let's uh, press here this different. No, not that one. Difference. Okay, seems like we have a problem. So let's separate some parts from this. So let's select this one by pressing L and then P and separate by selection. And then I'm going to duplicate this and move. Away. and then I'm going to select again those and then let's press this difference and now it looks good and then we have here this here so let's move it here and then uh, select first this one and then this one and difference okay it's not working let's delete that one and let's delete these two faces also and this face also and let's press numpad slash to see a little bit better what's going on there and 
I wanna select this uh, area here, so I press Alt plus Shift plus right mouse button, and then make sure that you have this edge uh, active, active edge like this. So it has to be active. And here we use active element, and then scale X and press zero. And we do the same here in this side also. So let's select this and delete faces. And then let's select this and scale X zero. And now we can create faces to, to those areas. And then let's press numpad slash again. So now we kind of fixed this. And now we can join this back to the original object, just like it should be there. And this looks very good. Okay, let's start doing the decoration for this object. So um, another layer and then uh, let's create a plane and maybe scale in Y axis. And then let's start adding some random kind of things. Something like this maybe. Scale by zero, and then I, I add here um, edge in the center so I can use the mirror modify. Let's first bevel this. Um, I wanna use here the present uh, offset type. So let's bevel again. Okay, good. So let's add, for example, here. The circle and remember to not have this clipping there so it's not kind of clipping <laughs> and then let's add here the circle let's fill it with f key something like this maybe it's quite okay i don't know how it looks like by the way it's up to you if you gonna have something different then just do it this is just what i'm doing at this moment. Um, maybe here some sort of. Okay. Uh, scale x zero. And then let's bevel these also. Okay, I don't know what is it. What is it supposed to be? I don't know even that, but you know, it's just a decoration. Maybe it's a Chinese language. Oh, let's use here medium points. And let's delete that face. And we also need to delete that face. Okay, now we have this kind of... It looks like an anchor, a little bit. Is it wrong to have an anchor in the coffee grinder? Okay, whatever. Um, then I'm going to duplicate this one. Uh, actually, I need to apply this mirror modifier. And now let's select everything and duplicate it. And then rotate in Z axis 180 degrees like that. And then let's move this to the layer 1. And now we need to uh, scale it and position it in the correct, correct spot. Okay, now it's good. And then I'm going to duplicate this. So uh, let's select for the, uh, it's actually, let's select them spot. And then let's move them here. And then let's select again everything. And then let's scale in X axis a little bit. So those are kind of fitting there. Yeah, looking very good. Let's select everything and then just extrude. Rotate in Z axis 90 degree, uh, 180 degrees and then move this here and center it. And then again and rotate in 90 degrees. So now we have those all. Let's join them to this one. Let's uh, center the cursor here. And then let's add here Lane, I guess, and then uh, just start moving these vertices and 
I move this here and then this I move here and then I need to move this a little bit in Z axis Control plus and move it in the correct spot and yeah then select it and then extrude down now that's my decoration for this and I think honestly I think I should uh, make here uh, I select just those and then press okay did I select everything needed actually this I don't wanna have them so W and then subdivide and now I can move this here and then this here and this is not completely symmetrical but it don't need to be it's handmade object so it's okay to have something that's not completely perfect and then let's select those both and duplicate and rotate 90 degrees so now we have those decorations and I also create here something in this corner and this and this so maybe something something quite simple so uh, what would be it be maybe I select uh, uh, actually duplicate this one and then uh, separate it and then uh, I will create here I will join here and now I can select this one and then let's press I to insert like this and then let's select uh, where is that okay wrong window okay let's select it again and I to insert and then F6 and here 0 and then um, Let's select this edge here and then control E and edge slide. Okay, so now we have this corner and we can delete everything else. So we have here this center vertex now and I just move it here inside a little bit and then shift plus control plus b i'm going to bevel it and this time i wanna use this width method method so let's bevel it again with this width okay this is okay so let's select it again and then e to extrude and then i to insert and now what's closely that you don't create uh, overlapping things there and then extrude inside so now we have this kind of thing and um, <clears throat> no I'm actually we have here perfectly this center point so I'm going to duplicate this in object mode instead of doing that in edit mode and then uh, I press shift plus D and rotate 180 and then I'm going to join it here and duplicate again and then rotate set axis 90 degrees and join those together okay then i'm going to join these to this one uh, let's keep doing my plan uh, now the voice meter this program just crashed and i need to record again some part of this i will do the handle now so let's sell uh, select this one and shift plus s and cursor to select it and then let's add here a cylinder then I shift plus, uh, shift plus S again and then I add here UV sphere and let's scale this and in Z axis also like that and maybe I scale this also a little bit smaller so I have this kind of uh, I don't know and then duplicate this one and I'm going to scale this again and 
Mm, let's press numbered period to center the div here. And uh, let's uh, select this uh, center, center here and this center here. And uh, I'm going to select those both like this. And then let's find here by pressing space uh, bridge edge loops like that. And then I'm going to scale this. And now this is getting very uh, weird because we can't look very close, closely what's going on here. So uh, I have here this N menu, this uh, view, and I just make this threshold a little bit smaller. So now I can go closer here. Actually I'm going to dissolve this edge. Make it back to the original value it had it was before. And okay, this is still a little bit too small, I think. So let's scale it. Okay, now it looks like a something that maybe don't drop out <laughs> in a first second. I will also dissolve some edges here. Something like that, I guess is quite okay. Alright, <clears throat> and then smooth shading here. And then we need of course the handle itself, so let's press numpad 1 and then 5. And then let's select here something and cursor to select it and then cube. And let's go to face selection mode and Le uh, with control clicking you can add more um, extruded things here. So I think something like this might be okay, safe. And that's I guess is very okay. And then I need to bevel those again. And now I need to use present so let's window and add that present and then bevel. Something like that and then smooth shading. Okay. Okay, so the handle needs the, that wooden part there also. And uh, I do it now. So let's select these two and then shift plus S and cursor to select it. And then let's add here cylinder and that's way too big. So I need to scale it. Let's go to top view. So I think the handle so should be somewhere like here and then I need to scale this in Z axis. Now we have here some geometry we don't actually need so let's just control plus those and then delete them away like that. And now let's duplicate this and then extrude and then extrude and scale and extrude and then extrude and scale to quite big because this is the handle you are supposed to be able to use this with your hands so I think this is good size for that and then extrude and scale and now we can bevel these. And smooth shading of course. And maybe this looks very good. Let's model some decoration also to this part. And I'm again uh, going to paste that in the older model I created earlier. So I do something almost similar. So let's go to other layer and center the cursor and then let's add here circle and I'm going to press V here so I kind of cut here that part and um, then I'm going to use here this connected proportional editing and now if I move something it's kind of uh, you see how it's behaving so 
if I do know here something, edit, um, it will look cool and that's the reason why I do it. And here I am going to also use the 3D cursor as the center. Let's maybe start first something like this and then let's start kind of sculpting it and then let's use again the median point because it seems like that it needs to do like that. Okay, I like this shape so I select everything and disable this proportional editing and then press E to extrude and then I just scale it like that. And maybe I also move a little bit like this. And I have this very cool shape here. And now uh, I select here something. Okay, let's first do here. So I bevel this. And then I select this one and extrude here. Maybe scale a little bit. And then I do the same here. Select this and extrude. And now I need to select. And now if I add here array modify, those are meeting perfectly. Except here. Okay, let's select these both and then here individual origins and scale x0. And let's go back median point. So now it's perfect. <laughs> Um, let's add here also, I'm going to select something like this and then cursor to select it and let's add here circle. Again, you don't need to do the same if you don't like to do it in a similar way as I do. But I do it like this and you do your own version. Let's add more segments to those that because we are uh, deforming those soon and then smooth shading and we need to delete that uh, center face there and there also uh, also there we need more segments okay so now if we add here like I don't know somewhere uh, then let's move this here and um, we need to scale it, of course. And let's add simple deform modify. Where is it? Simple deform and let's use bend. And now we need to use here the uh, 316. So with this we can kind of um, add your uh, curves in a correct spot. And I also need to move a little bit something like this and then I'm going to rotate in X axis and now you just scale it until you find out that it it's fitting there and rotate in X axis take your time Then here individual origins and scale x zero. Let's move that a little bit down. Maybe it's okay. And I need to use here in the array modify merge. And let's add more distance there. And 
By the way, why this simple deform don't have merge feature? It should have. But it's okay. Uh, we are going to apply those both now. And now I'm going to select only these. And then I'm going to uh, remove doubles. And now we don't have those problems anymore. Okay, very good. And then I'm going to join these. So those decorations are there. And now I'm going to add also some decoration there in this smaller area. And I'm going to do those a little bit differently now. Let's create a circle and actually we need to center the cursor first. So ah so C to C and then let's add here a circle and let's move it here and then edit mode scale it. This and then we need to move it in the correct place in edit mode. It won't work when you are in object mode. Or of course it works, but it's not work working correctly. So that's why uh, the object mode you are kind of moving the center point, and I really want to have the center point here in the center of this object at this moment. So rotate in y-axis and here and maybe scale a little bit more and rotate in y-axis and extrude and scale and extrude and then I'm going to move it here in this spot and then let's go to top view if, if this looks good to you now I think it's good to me so let's enter the cursor again by pressing C plus C and then let's here select spin and we need here 316 degrees and we need also this dupli and then we just add more of those until we have enough and let's delete that last one because it created a duplicate to this same spot and now we need the bevel modifier here so let's select this object where we are going to add the bevel modifier and let's go to edit mode and then let's select all the edges where you wanna have big bevels. And he, uh, actually, I wanna have in this whole object everywhere in that one. So I selected that object, and then here I'm going to use mean bevel weight. And actually, uh, I'm going to add in both of those those. And then I'm going to select this and I'm going to add also this, the mean bevel weight and those in 100% and now you need to click around a little bit but it's worth of it, it's worth of your hard job. Let's do the same, okay I'm not going to add it there. So now when we added those we add here bevel modifier. And it created very small bevels, but if we now change anything here, this which value, we are not getting very much bigger bevels. And that's because of this clamp overlap. So this setting prevents us to creating this kind of craziness. So um, it's very handy if you don't have weights selected. But we have weight selected now, so we just click here. And now we are uh, adding bevels only those edges where we added those uh, weights. So <clears throat> let's make a little bit smaller with this one. To me something like 0.0066. It's very good. And I'm going to add a little bit more segments there. So now we smooth some areas of this. And we can add no more pebbles to areas where we wanna have those. So for example. 
And no more overlapping. Actually, I'm going to select those out because those are not going to be needed that much leveling. So let's just reduce. Maybe 0 0.43 is good for those. And then let's add another bevel modify. And now let's use angle. And with that we prevent it from adding bevels from those bevels. So we are not beveling the bevels. We are, we are beveling only those uh, areas where we have this specific angle or more than this. So I'm going to add here something like 80 degrees and now we can add here any value and because we have here this clamp overlap we are not creating overlapping bevels. Let's add a little bit more segments. And let's do the same job here, but uh, I think I'm going to add only without those weights and only angle. And let's add a few, few segments to make those areas look better. And of course we need the smooth setting also. My blender started acting so slow. Okay. Okay, it, it kind of works now again. So yeah, we have noticed there and it's cool. So I'm going to leave it like that there. And um, anything else? We need to model. I need to look at my reference project. <coughs> oh yes, um, this object. Uh, we need to add here also things. So uh, let's uh, center the cursor here. Yeah, and then let's get it. This, and like this, and this already looks like quite nice to me. And I'm going to scale this. 
Yeah, but I think I'm going to scare this also a little bit. And then I create a little extra here. Like that. No, if you want to, you can add some beveling there. Something like that. Or, or something. Yeah, and then I'm going to join this. So the other one and then smooth setting. And uh, what's going on? Do I have the bevel there or not? Okay, I'm going to select here. No, it's again so lucky. Uh, I'm going to select these edges. And then I'm going to add bevels. And this model actually is quite much ready. So we can start doing materials now. And let's select this object and let's create the new and let's call this wood. And I'm using PPR materials add-on. So let's select this one and if you don't have that already, then uh, gdwolf.com slash materials and you download here and then you install it and so on. So that's it and let's select here wood. And I'm also using here from the settings I'm going to track this color here. And I'm going to make these parts from the metal so I create new uh, PPR material here and let's uh, select here some metal of it. Those maybe are and I think they are just iron so let's select that one and let's make viewport color something like this and then we need to select all the parts we are using the iron so so this is going to take a little bit time. Uh, actually, I'm going to invert select. It's easier, I think, to select inverted. So now control I and then here assign and let's call this material iron. Yeah, and this is of course using the wood material also. And here we are going to use the iron material, expect this part, which is going to be the wood. So if we now go in rendered mode by pressing Shift plus Z, you see that we need to edit those. So let's add here to the iron a little bit more roundness, because those are not supposed to be very, uh, very clean mid mid iron. Those are like very old and and like that so we need to add some sort of rust there also and let's go here in uh, notes and uh, let's uh, select here for example um, rust texture and let's connect this to the roundness and now we already have a little bit more rust looking thing there. And uh, let's connect it also to the albedo. And we use the color ramp to uh, control a little bit of those colors. So let's connect this ramp here to the albedo. And let's change this black color to brownish, I guess. And I also want to make this scale a little bit bigger, so those spots are kind of more large. And I think it's better like that. And then um, let's select some color for the kind of clean areas. Like that. And let's see how this looks like. Um, also I need ramp, color ramp to this roundness. So let's see, um, white color, I'm going to make this white color actually a little bit darker and this black color, I'm going to make it white here. So no, the uh, dark areas are not reflecting very much and 
the uh, other areas are, are kind, kind of more reflective, but I think they are already a little bit too much of that, so I reduce that effect and I think it's better now. But maybe the colors are a little bit too strong, so... I think that's better. Okay, it looks like a dirt or something like that. Um, I don't know, was that a bad idea to have those? Uh, let's select here these scratches and let's try this here in the routeness. And now uh, let's make these a little bit darker. Oh, please don't crash. Oh, it's crashing. Oh, Blender, why you do this to me? It's always when I'm changing these uh, cycle settings, Blender crashes. So let's open it again. I think I'm very happy about this. Maybe a little bit more glossiness. Um, this was wrong. Okay, now it's like mirror. And then this one. It's going to be full white. So now we have those scratches and let's make those scratches also a little bit bigger or maybe smaller, maybe even more of those. You know it's kind of bruised steel almost. By the way I'm using the node wrangle add-on if you did notice, so user preferences. Wrangle, and I was clicking here. Uh, control plus shift plus left mouse button. So let's just find some good result. Or do we have some better? No, we don't have here. So I'm going to leave it like that. Of course you can download some bruised steel texture if you want to, but I'm using that one, I'm lazy, I'm not going to download at this moment. But for example under Andrew Price's uh, polygon.com I guess is the address. From there you can, I believe you can uh, download very good textures for this kind of metals. Okay, let's create some wood textures for those wood parts. So uh, let's first select this material and then let's add here image texture and let's open something. Uh, you can download something that is good to you. I think I'm going to use something I already have. And maybe this one. And here I'm going to press Ctrl plus T and I'm using object coordinates and here box and then a little bit blend. And now we should have wood texture on all of those. But we have problem if you look closely those textures are kind of um, having the same coordinates in each of those objects. And they are kind of uh, the object are kind of sharing the same texture and of course because those are supposed to be separate pieces of uh, wood it kind of wrong if the textures are kind of shared like that so I'm going to fix that and for that I need to uh, separate all of these objects so uh, let's for example separate those, separate by selection. So now we have 
this kind of new object and then let's se let's separate this object i think yeah by selection and then let's separate these two by selection and uh, of course also this one and this separate by selection so now we have bunch of different objects here and uh, then we can use a texture coordinate object here so let's create a empty and we are going to use that empty as a texture coordinate so let's click this pivot the tool and click this <coughs> and no those op are not shared uh, actually they are shared uh, still but if we move this uh, object now in the uh, in the rendered mode those textures are kind of following it and that's okay but we need to do something else well still so let's add here uh, object info node and then let's add here mix rgb and now we mix this texture coordinates with this random so no those are not anymore shared in all of those uh, objects in the same way which I think is very good because <clears throat> if there's there are different objects they should have different textures also I mean something like that and maybe I make this tile size a little bit smaller okay looking pretty good I guess and let's change the lighting a little bit uh, we already have almost finished that object and the scene needs only a little bit work so uh, I'm going to change this to a spot lamp and then let's make it pointing to the object and let's see how it looks like let's say that we wanna render it out from this direction so let's press ctrl alt 0 to center the camera here and let's see so we need to tweak the light source settings um, I'm going to add more power to this because this is the backlight so uh, it can be very powerful even more okay then I need to rotate it again so it's kind of always in the back This is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> Maybe even more strength to this. Okay, looking quite okay, and I need to check my other file. What else light sources I have there? So let's duplicate this one and rotate in Z axis. And this is, uh, I think I'm going to use this as the main light source. So uh, I will reduce the uh, strength from this. Uh, Divide. Uh, okay, no. Divided with five, for example. Let's see how this effect. Okay, it can be stronger. Okay. 
and uh, also the background I'm going to use completely black background so we can see what's going on there and I make this main light source also bigger in size so let's change this size value here so that helps us to have more smooth shadows there <coughs> Okay, multiply this with two, for example, or even more. Okay, divide it two. I think this is getting quite okay. Let's make more warm color there. And then I'm going to duplicate this again, and this is going to be the fill light. And we need to reduce the strength from this very much. Because it's just to fill the shadows of this object, so they are not completely black. Like that, I think it's quite okay. And I also add more reflectiveness to the wood material and maybe reduce a little bit roundness so it looks more smooth and other thing I would like to do is to add some bump mapping there and because I don't have bump mapping for this specific texture I'm going to use the texture itself to bump it so let's find bump node and let's connect it there into the normal and this texture to the height. <coughs> and now we have those micro details there, but those are too strong, so let's reduce the strength from those. Even more. I think this is good value. Also, maybe let's add some uh, other details to that. So let's find here some texture. Uh, what is plaster? Let's see what happens with this one. This one. So uh, let's add here mix RGB. And then let's connect this texture in both of those. So we are now mixing the albedo uh, color. And then let's add this to the factory and then let's add color ramp and let's oh not ramp what as what was i thinking um, rgb curves and let's make the other part of this texture darker so if we look this now with uh, control plus shift plus left mouse button uh, we see what kind of is this texture. So I want to make a little bit bigger details from that plaster. Oh, what did I know? I didn't press anything. Uh, let's go out from this. Okay. And let's add here ramp to tweak a little bit of, the, of, the, of, the, of that uh, plaster texture. Okay, now it's completely black. Okay, now there is some dirt kind of details there around. But uh, let's make them a little bit less obvious by adjusting this curve node and I'm adding more brownish color to those by adjusting also this red channel and something like that maybe it's because of butter or something like that there is some that kind of patterns
or maybe it's mold. So this, this object is may, maybe not very good for creating food, but yeah, it's an antique object and it's very old, so it can look a little bit dirty. And next thing I would model is the bean model. Let's create a new layer and let's add here cube. I'm going to paste the bean model to that cube and I'm going to scale it in X axis like this. Actually, I'm going to add subdivision surface modifier. Makes no sense. So here some um, support edge and then few more levels and then here one center it's I think and I'm going to scale this in X axis so it doesn't deform too much of this object and uh, I also add here in the center okay I'm not going to add that and then I'm going to move this a little bit so it's more like this kind of bolt Save and then uh, let's select those bottom parts. And okay, that looks good. I need to check the topology of this. So, how I made those. Um, okay, let's apply this. And now we have this kind of. And this looks a lot better. So, uh, I can now select here this area and here this area and then deselect those and then I'm going to extrude these and now uh, another subdivision surface modifier and no, it m looks a lot better, um, but uh, I think I need to move a little bit those up because we had to tear those. What do you call those? It looked bad, so I just need to edit it. And let's maybe make this um, hole a little bit smaller. Scale in the y axis. Do I even need this? Uh, dissolve edges. Okay, I need it. Do I need that? Yes, I need those also. But here I think is this edge loop which I don't need. Either I think I don't need those also. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And uh, this is just. Uh, testing. <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to add cool details there. Maybe I add no here decimate uh, modify and unsubdivide. Let's apply this and then this. Because I had the, I can't remember the reason, but I had the, this um, opposite uh, uh, kind of crossing topology there, so I will create the same here. It kind of adds something to the uh, object, some strange little, <laughs> little details. So, so why not? Let's create something like that. And now I will use the proportional editing to add some additional details here. So it doesn't look so uniform, more natural kind of shape. Yes, um, I will smooth also a little bit here. So select this and then smooth vertices. Something like this, I guess, is very good for the bean model. Let's duplicate this to see how it looks like if we had two of those. Rotate Y, 
180 degrees and let's move it there. So what do you think? Is this been? <laughs> Um, I think it's not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to scale this part with proportional editing a little bit in y-axis. I think it looks no better, so I'm going to leave it like that. <clears throat> Sorry if you are a biologist and <laughs> you think that the bean should not be like that, but my bean at least is now like that, so I'm going to move it to the uh, layer 1 and then I need to scale it to the size which I think is correct for those. I think this might be okay size. So let's apply the scale and then um, I'm also transforming and origin to geometry, so now the origin is in the center. And then I'm going to create a material, and I call this material bean. And let's add some viewport color so it looks kind of better. Okay, I modeled there uh, this additional object. Sorry, I, have, I don't have record uh, record of this because um, again my programs crashed and I created something that is not useful. So what I did is I modeled this object here and I added here, here I added there to this object I added passive physics so it means that it's a physics object that don't move and then I added here active and then here I have uh, um, passive and here passive and here passive and here passive and the reason why I have here Another object which is kind of trying to mimic the other object is that um, the object is so complex that I just tr try to avoid adding too much calculation to the physics by creating something a little bit more simple than the original object. So, so now I have the physics, but I don't need to calculate all of those small details there. So yeah, and then what I did also, I did scale this whole scene to, uh, to the correct size, and now I will show you how I did it. Um, so um, here, um, <coughs> uh, you select this length, and you click here metric, and then you click here centimeters, and then when you click this, the whole scene sold uh, kind of scale to the bigger. You, you will see that this, uh, this grid floor will uh, kind of uh, became <laughs> bigger. And um, then I selected everything here and I started scaling those. So if I select for example this object, you see that this, it's 15 centimeters high and you just scale those objects like this oh not like that sorry um you se select everything and then you don't have these <laughs> these manipulate center points only button here and you scale and then you will see here the size of uh, the object which is active i guess Yeah, you will see the uh, active object dimensions here. And just scale it until you find out a result that is good for your project. Or you can, by the way, write there if you know exact uh, dimensions of your object. And then let's select everything and press uh, Ctrl plus A and apply scale. I hope that helps you with this one. And then uh, we have here this add uh, active uh, physics object and if we now press alt plus, alt plus a you see that it's kind of dropping there just like a stone and now when we have this 
uh, object vi visit the dimensions here, by the way. Actually, uh, I'm going to Google. So I think I need to scale it to smaller. But because this coffee grinder also is not correctly in correct size, so I will cheat a little bit and I, I actually leave it kind of bigger. <laughs> Those are like a um, coffee beans some from animation or or some dreams or whatever. But I wanna make big beans, so I leave it to this size. But if you wanna have exactly correct size of everything, then you should notice that you need to scale them the correct size. So here we have our fake bean. And um, I'm going to start duplicating these fake beans. And let's rotate a little bit so they don't fall so even here. Like this. It, it looks better if they're like that. And now I just duplicate these until I have enough to fill this container. we have another problem because we scaled this uh, we also scaled the textures so let's fix the textures now apply rotation and scale let's see what happens with that okay uh, so we need to make those details of course bigger there and then we need to make also this bigger so let's put there something like one okay zero zero point five that might be better Let's see in very close up. I'm going to try with 0 0.3. Okay, I think it's good. And then this material. Uh, let's isolate it so we can see it better. How it looks like in very close up. I'm going to make those scratches a little bit bigger and also this uh, rust pattern. <coughs> I think overall this texture is quite okay like that, so I'm not going to touch it very much anymore. <coughs> and the light sources also are a little bit problematic. What happens if I... Ah, okay, so let's go in light settings. Let's go in camera view. And we also need to change the camera settings. Uh, clipping. And let's add here like two meters. <coughs> so we need to make those light sources stronger. Multiply this with five, for example. And then this one, let's multiply this with ten. And also this object here, which is this physics object. Um, let's go here in the outliner and let's press numpad period key. And you select that one and then let's click this small camera icon. So no, it won't render anymore. 
actually it will render in preview view but uh, if we click this also then it won't render and we have this also so let's click here also numbered period and then let's click those and now we have what we wanna have Okay, the table also needs some material, so um, let's select the table and then let's click here this new and let's call this table. And I'm going to add some sort of boost there also and I also need to download the textures for, from somewhere, so let's go to textures.com and let's find something. Good. And those are by the way very nice those PBR textures. But I think this might be a little bit too route for this. What about this one? Actually, this is very nice. I'm going to download that one, and I'm going to download uh, this uh, albedo, then displacement, and normal map, and roundness map. And okay, let's download also this ambient occlusion map. And I'm not going to download this map. So uh, let's go in the folder and let's move all of those uh, to the textures folder. So where is my folder? Uh, I'm going to create new folder here. Uh, this, this is very stupid, but yeah, it's good now. <laughs> and then I'm going to copy this one, and then actually uh, I'm going to move it like here, like, like oh, what is that theater of uh, Windows? That's so annoying. Okay, so uh, I just drag and drop these textures here. So this is the albedo, 
and this is the ambient occlusion and and then I uh, lost the folder and this is the heat map <laughs> ah, I hate this. and normal map and routes map and then I close this so I have all the textures here so, uh, so let's see what happens with this one uh, control plus shift plus left mouse button and let's isolate this by pressing number slash and we need also unwrap it uh, let's make it a little bit bigger because we can and then uh, you unwrap and now let's see okay and then we have this map which is this uh, ambient occlusion map so let's connect this here in the diffuse actually uh, let's use here the PPR material so let's take this PPR and then let's connect it here and then let's connect this albedo here because it's the albedo and then this ambient occlusion map I'm going to mix those together and then I'm going to set here multiply Okay, let's add here ramp. Because I wanna get those shadows kind of back here. A little bit better. Okay, good. And then, um, what, which texture is? Okay, this is the normal map. So let's select here non color data and then Let's connect that to the normal and then let's add here normal map and it's going to be there. So now we have the normal, de normal details and we can control them with this one. Maybe not, not going too crazy with that one. So that's it. And then we have here this routeness map and let's connect it to the routeness like that and then the last one is this displacement map so let's connect it to the displacement like that and now if you want to you can also displace this uh, material with, uh, with the micro displacement but I think I'm not going to do that at this point. Do we have something else also here? Ambient occlusion, routeness, routeness B. Let's check what happens if we add the, this routeness also to the reflectiveness. And let's add invert. This is again something you can just play with. If it looks better, but I think it's not going to look better like that. And also, I think uh, it's still a little bit too uh, glossy. So I'm going to add here ramp and I'm going to kind of reduce the reflectiveness of this by adjusting this. Just like that. And then, uh, ah. then let's select one of these and press Ctrl plus T. And then we connect the same mapping node to all of those textures. And now we can uh, edit the scale. And I put there something like two. Like that. And then we can go out from the isolation mode by pressing numpad slash. And let's see from the camera view how it looks like. Uh, 
and I think it looks beautiful. But um, I want to change the color of that uh, floor plane also. So let's add here curves and let's make it maybe a little bit darker and maybe a little bit more red. It's coffee scene anyways, so we should have the coffee kind of color. Uh, I'm trying to use the golden radius. Golden cut. Is that even word in English? Uh, camera settings, camera preset, uh, compositing goods. So golden. Yeah, that's it. And I think this is very good spot. So this part is kind of in the golden triangle, golden spot. Golden corner. <laughs> I don't know. It's in the cor uh, golden place. It's golden. I don't know. And now the last job is just to add those beans in a correct way. Let's um, remove this diffuse and let's add here. I think wood also works here. Yeah, so there no, no wood. <coughs> and I'm going to add a little bit more reflectiveness and I make this color a little bit darker. And by the way, uh, we need to create some a uh, little bit more tricky things there. So let's add here noise texture and then let's add here bump node and let's connect it to this normal and this factory to the head and let's isolate one of those pins and this is okay and let's change these settings until we have good looking bump mapping there and those are not very uh, don't have too many details for example this looks fake so uh, you can add very small details but you should remove the strength of this bump mapping until it's very subtle effect maybe like that and and also adding some color variation to this so uh, let's add here RGB, uh, mix RGB and let's track this here and here something a little bit darker and let's connect this here and this uh, factor here and a little bit less scale and then let's add here ramp. yes and then I, I will add a, another level of color variation and that is for uh, every of those beans separately so so all of those are supposed to have a little bit different color so let's add here uh, color ramp and let's track this here and then let's create here some other color something like this maybe and then let's connect this here and then let's add here object info and random and then um, let's duplicate this and track this color here and then connect this here and this random also here so now we create kind of randomness to this Okay, you select your own colors. Uh, maybe there is a little bit too strong those spots. 
and I make these colors a little bit darker so the spots are not so obvious. Okay, I'm going with this one. So let's press numpad slash again and let's see how this looks like now. <coughs> This beam, I need to wait it to fall down. Also, I think I need here uh, passive physics. So let's play this whole thing again. Looking quite good, I think. Um, let's duplicate this light source and let's move it down a little bit. I wanna add some random reflection reflections also there, so I will do it with this light source. And let's see if we did something. And I don't wanna have this here, so I need to rotate the light source until it's not touching the floor anymore, like that. Let's see now. Okay, I think it's better now. And let's select this object and uh, number uh, period and then let's click this so we don't see it anymore. And let's do the same here. Number period and now those are not anymore booking. And what comes to the coffee beans? I wanna add a little bit more, more color variation to them. Uh, I found some uh, I found some uh, images about coffee beans and there were actually very much of variation in the color of those. So I will do the same here also. I will add very much variation between the beans. So uh, here we have the light beans. Let's add here quite light color and here we have the dark beans. So let's add here dark and this is the we, we are mixing with the same seed number so if we randomly select here this spot then we select also here the same spot so maybe you understand i hope you understand this my very bad explained but yeah now we have a little bit more variation in the colors of those which is always not nice Okay, that's fixed now. And then maybe... Let's again isolate one of those. So... I think it needs more um, lossiness. So let's reduce a little bit the roughness. So it's kind of reflecting more. I think it's more realistic like that. And maybe let's reduce also the uh, bump mapping a little bit. Oh, 
but I will add another uh, bump map there. So I, I'm kind of, mi kind of mixing too. So I will have this very, very subtle bump map and then I will add some bigger detail uh, bump there. So let's mix those and then let's make this very big. And then let's add here ramp, color ramp. And then let's tweak. Now if we look this control plus C plus left mouse button, you see what we are doing. And actually we can now add this back a little bit. So the idea is to reduce a little bit of this noise, but then add something to that other noise. So if we go like here, we have only this texture, and if we go here, we have only that other texture. maybe okay now we have those small holes there or kind of effects of some processing and now just let's go back here to reveal this texture behind of the other one I think this is good amount of this texture, but I wanna make this texture a little bit more subtle and how I do it, I select this ramp and then I make this uh, black color a little bit whiter. Yeah, I think now it's better. I like how the bean looks like now. If you have some better ideas, you can do your own. And what is that? Where did I get that thing? No, I have to say I have no idea what is that thing. I'm going to delete it. If you can figure out where that flat thing appeared, please tell me in the comment section. It will be very interesting to know because I just don't have any idea where was it from. But yeah, of course, if you want to, you can also use for the uh, lighting an HDR image. So let's check this out also. So. Here in the world settings, use nodes and then let's load some environment texture and let's open something. I have this kind of folder here and I'm going to use some public domain image because I have some of those and maybe something like this. And let's see how this affects the image. And then um, here maybe we wanna use tra transparent background. As you can see, the image is kind of more realistic when we have real lights there. So maybe it's not bad idea to use that also in the background. Also, you can here click this show cone. So you can see where the light source is actually uh, touching. So we can perfectly uh, rotate it until it's kind of 
illuminating only the areas where we actually wanna have the light effect. Yes, I think it's better. And the background display here, uh, I'm going to add some trick there to uh, kind of hide the edges of this. So let's go here in the material of this table and then let's add here mix shader and then let's add here transparent and let's connect this transparent to the down slot and then let's add here gradient texture and choose spherical type and then let's connect this here and then let's add color ramp and select this one and press ctrl plus t and use object coordinates and here let's use ease so if we isolate this now Mm, it's hard to see actually anything, but if we tweak a little bit these settings now um, Actually Yeah, this is a problem. Uh, let's switch those and Let's make this bigger 0 0.2 maybe. Okay, still too big. It's too small. I mean uh, 0 0.05 0.01 Okay, and now let's see again. So control plus uh, right uh, control plus shift plus left mouse button and now we see the effect we wanna do So now we can tweak it with this and It will be better and let's get out from the isolation mode and let's see how it looks like in the render and let's also change a little bit this mm, wood material. I think it looks a little bit too much of a plastic or something like that. So let's reduce a little bit the glossiness, I guess. I mean reflections. And let's add some additional displacement there by adding noise, noise texture. And let's mix it with this one. And let's see how this looks like. Um, let's add some distortion also there. And details to the max. And something like this maybe is very good. And let's isolate it again. Select it and slash the numpad. And then render it mode. And we can add here math node and let's multiply it so those details are getting stronger like that. Maybe negative value instead. And maybe even smaller. So there is some very crazy details there. I think that's very good. And also I will wanna add some color variation there because why not? We can do it, so let's do it. And I'm going to target that color variation to the albedo. So let's duplicate this RGB node and let's add this uh, to the RGB. This is the albedo mixed with ambient occlusion maps. And let's mix those together. Alt plus right mouse button and uh, let's make this version a little bit darker actually here and the red channel may be back and then let's add here noise texture to mix those two, two together so add, let's add here noise and let's connect it here to the factory and let's add also ramp, color ramp, and tweak those a little bit, little bit color variation here.
And no, again, it's up to you. What kind of color variation you wanna have there? I think some very old wood can cause uh, can create this kind of uh, darker spots there. I can remember from my childhood that we used to have a table on our yard and it it had something like that. Kind of dark spots there. So I will create that same here. And by the way, you can add also this multiply to the um, this displacement texture. If you wanna make those stronger, those uh, realistic booms there. So now might be your moment to do it. I also make this little bit smaller, so let's put there something like three maybe. So those details are not so big anymore. And let's go out from the isolation mode and let's see now how this looks like. I think I should have some sort of uh, glossy map there because reflection map because uh, it looks like that it needs some. What's there? No, not that either. Okay, I'm going to use this also as a reflection map. So let's connect this here and let's see how it looks like. Uh, let's isolate the model again. And now we need to tweak a little bit those settings. I mean, we need to add here ramp. This is getting very complex. Uh, where is that mouse? So this and here let's duplicate for example this node here and as you can see now we removed all the reflections with this one so let's go a little bit back. And then let's make maybe make this a little bit darker so it's not so glossy. And let's create also something some background there. And I'm going to create a plane there. So let's add here a plane and rotate in x axis 90 degrees and then rotate in x axis 90 degrees and then let's scale it. And let's isolate it. So if we render it now, looks bad. And then uh, we just need to make some settings there. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it almost black, like that. And then let's press numpad slash again and rotate in z-axis. Somewhere here, I think. Okay, that maybe will do. And let's add here also glossy. And let's mix those together. And uh, let's add Fresnel and connect this here. And then I'm going to add here another. And th this is going to be transparent. And let's connect it here. And uh, let's add here uh, light pad and this camera ray. And let's fix those. So it's going to be transparent. So uh, for the lights. So that means that it will not affect the lighting of this object. So I think that's good. And now, if you want to, you can add also another light source uh, to the background image, uh, background plane. So 
for example, if we duplicate this one and then rotate it pointing to the background plane like this, and then let's see how it looks like. We have here this cool light effect. Let's try different settings. For example, what happens if it's if it's going from this direction? I kind of like it because even though it's it has nothing to do with realism, I mean these lights are not of course um, illuminating this, but it's kind of gives you a hint that the light is coming from this direction. So it's kind of light leak or something like that. Okay, before I render I will change a little bit of some of the materials. So um, one material I wanna change is this iron. And I think it's a little bit too bright. So I make these colors a little bit darker. And let's see what, what kind of effect we have with that. Maybe something like that, I guess. Also, I wanna add some sort of normal mapping there, because, you know, because we can. So, let's add here, for example, no noise, texture, and let's connect this here, and then let's uh, put boom, boom, mapping here, and then let's connect this here, and then let's... Uh, Something like this, I guess, is very good. So now I'm going to press F12 and then render it out. So now let's pause this recording. Okay, here is the image and let's save it. Uh, TIFF file and 16 bit and I'm going to name it as a 3.tiff like that and then I'm going to open it in Photoshop and then I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to add camera raw filter and I click this auto and then let's go back with the exposure and then let's make the colors a little bit warmer and with this tint we can kind of fix the colors a little bit and then let's add also a little bit clarity because I think that this image needs a little bit more contrast and clarity is one way to do that and also with this contrast and then let's open a little bit maybe shadows and for the highlights I think I'm going to uh, reduce a little bit of those Okay, this looks very good, and maybe a little bit vibrance, and okay, not so much saturation. And then we have this sharpening, and let's uh, crop this a little bit smaller area here, and let's reduce also noise a little bit, because this seems to be quite noisy image at the moment. Okay, that's quite all right I think and then we can add just a little bit the highlights and set up shadows with these settings okay I think this adds a little bit more interesting to this uh, image by setting up these settings and then uh, you can also if you want to use this dehatch uh, feature which kind of reduces the fog or mist from the image but actually we don't have those things in the image but I think it, it sometimes makes the image a little bit more clear looking so so I sometimes use this and I think this is one of those images where it's kind of good and then we have this vignette and I am going to add vignette also and feather to the max and something like this and now we can control how much we have those and 
Maybe not too much because, you know, as a Finnish person, I call this a Heikura effect, and Heikura is one famous Finnish photographer. Let's let me show you. And it's funny because he always adds this vignette to all of his photos, and it's kind of funny. So we call this a Heikura effect because of that reason. And yeah, so now you know background for that word. And okay, maybe duplicate this again. And we can also, uh, if you have installed the Nick collection, which also works as a standalone program, but it also works as a uh, filter for Photoshop. So uh, you can use these also if you have those. Those are free to use and free to download and everything is free so use them if you like but we can do it you can see now uh, it loading it's loading now uh, the program has all the features so so you can kind of quite realistic uh, looking things do with this uh, filter hand I kind of like this I like what can I can do with this hand it's easy to use so we can we have here a very good gallery of those scratches for example and then we can move them around here and change their strength and so on and then uh, maybe we can also add just the less vignette with this one and create Heikura effect <laughs> like that and then uh, maybe the film type is a little bit too strong so I'm going back with this one I'm, I'm adding uh, more neutral and reduce the strength of this also like that and we can also add just the grain amount of this image and because this image is already a little bit noisy I think it's not bad to add also a little bit grained uh, so it, it kind of looks more like a real photo and I think it looks quite okay so let's press ok and now it's uh, rendering this filter we need to just wait okay here we have it so if you think the effect is too strong for some random reason, then you can just lower the opacity of this layer. And now you have kind of both of those. Or you can create layer masks and reduce the effect from some specific areas, for example, this area. So let's create a mask there and then just paint here a little bit. And now we have less of that effect in this area, which I think is good because it was a little bit overexposed there. Or maybe, maybe I add here also a little bit, I mean reduce a little bit the effect, so those are not so dark. And then as a last touch I'm going to add here curves, and with this I do the final tuning for this image. Okay, I think it's quite alright like that. You can also lower the uh, opacity of this if you for some reason wanna do that, but I think I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to say this image now finished and um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next tutorial.